Well, folks, what you're watching right now is a buck working a scrape, a mock scrape that was made by my friend, Miss Stephanie Murphy, with TRHP Outdoors, a company that makes all kind of neat products, but especially scents to attract deer. Stephanie, that buck is working that scrape over, isn't he? Well, what you can't see is that over to the right side of that food plaza, I'm sitting up in a tree watching the whole thing. Now, I'm watching him go back and forth, chasing all of the dough all over the place. And eventually, when you get to the part of the video, all of a sudden, his nose is down to the ground, and then he stops and turns straight to the scrape that I had created. Awesome. Went over, tore up the preorbital, and then marked the territory. <laughs> <laughs> That's some awesome video, and it to to create a scrape, you know, something that occurs naturally in the wild with a white-tailed deer to create that and then have that buck like that coming in is amazing. But folks can, in just a bit, um, we're going to go, and Stephanie is going to show you how she makes the mock scrape. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty simple, but there is a process there, isn't it, Stephanie? Yes, sir, there is. I usually look for signs where I've seen deer either digging or scraping or ripping some of the leaves off the lower hanging branches. And I look for those areas, and depending upon what I find, I'll respond with the different products that we have. So yep. then that makes them think that there's another dominant buck in the area, and it really makes them aggressive. It, it's amazing. And folks, you can uh, check all these product, products out at www.trhpoutdoors.com right stephanie yes sir that's it well let's move in and, and let's let's watch stephanie actually set the, the uh, mock scrape up hey y'all welcome to our how to create a mock scrape video brought to you by trhp outdoors i always start anything i do out in the outdoors with st guardian i start head to toe spray I even hit the bottom of my feet. Hair comes next. Ready to go. I found the perfect place for our mock scrape. Usually what I look for is an area that has branches like this that are typically about three feet off the ground. And I want a wide variety of branches. They can be alive, they can be dead. What I'll start off with is I use my preorbital spray. I lightly spray it on the ends. I've already pre-cleared the area for our mock scrape. So we'll take our can, I'm using Scrape King. Pop this lid off of here. I wanna remind everybody that I have sprayed my hands down with Scent Guardian because you don't wanna bring any scent into the area. Inside of our cans, it is pre-infused with our Scrape King scents. So you pop the lid back on there, open up your vent, pop it in the ground, and you want it even with the ground Put your dirt back around it. And that's how we create our mock scrapes at TRHB Outdoors. Hope y'all have a great day. Folks, this outdoor cooking does not have to be complicated at all. You might be able to hear this wild pork beginning to sizzle. Basically, the old cast iron Dutch kettle, some B&B, &B, pecan wood, that's some really dry wood, good wood to cook with. Pretty simple. We're going to let this cook in the Dutch kettle, let it brown on both sides. I'll turn it over here in a minute. I'll show you what it looks like when we brown it. Basically, it's just seasoned up with dry seasonings that I like, not barbecue. We just want to cook this pork so it's real, real tender. We'll put a lid on it here in about, well, after we turn it, after we brown it on both sides. And then in about two hours, I'm gonna hang it up a little bit higher up on this makeshift rack. <laughs> See what we've got here, pretty simple. We'll hang it up a little bit higher and let it slow cook with a lid. Okay, my friends, we have turned this pork over. We're gonna brown this other side of it here. Got a good fire going, so if this fire will die down, I want it to be a little high right now so it'll brown this, brown both sides of this pork, and then we'll put the lid on this, the kettle, raise it up, we're at a lower heat setting right here. We'll raise it up to this, up a bit higher here on this thing, and then we'll 
let it slow cook for, I don't know, a couple of hours. It's not going to burn at a low temperature. And this is going to be some tender wild pork. Sometimes wild pork is a bit tough, you know, it can be hard to get tender, but a Dutch kettle, a little moisture in there like we have right here in probably an hour or so, this meat will be fall off the bone tender. Okay, we'll put a lid on it now and let her cook. And there we go, my friends. We've got the lid on the old cast iron Dutch kettle. We don't have to put coals on top because, as you see, we've got, got a bunch of wood under here. That's going to burn down and just cook real, real slow. So we'll pull the lid on this thing. I'll check it honestly in about 45 minutes, but probably turn it one time. We'll take a look at the finished product. I wish all of you were here to help me enjoy this because kind of way method that I've used many, many times cooking wild pork. It's going to be tender and it's going okay, to be tasty. Folks, here we go. I tell you what, I've already, you know I've sampled this stuff. Hmm, I've actually done more than sample. I ate one of those others over there. Is wild pork good to eat? <laughs> yeah, it is. But I tell you what, best of Texas barbecue sauce right here, folks. I absolutely love it. This is not barbecue, but I got to have some more of this on there. Actually, I put a lot of it on there. I need to get open another jar of this. I eat this stuff big time. There we go, folks. Uh, I don't think outdoor cooking could get any simpler than this, do you? I wish you were here. Got those other two right over there in the Dutch kettle. I could plate you up some, but uh, I'll be forced to enjoy it myself. Let's move on with our show, see what Jeff and Larry's got in store. Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about hatch chili peppers. Typically you'll find the uh, hatch chili peppers sometime in, you know, the months of August, early September. And um, obviously we've picked up uh, six very large um, hatch chili peppers. And uh, one thing of note, they can be mild all the way to very, very hot. So these were mild ones. And so we decided that we're going to pick up um, a few of these and we're going to make smoked hatch chilies for future use in recipes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split these, cut them lengthwise, open them up. I'm going to clean out all of the seeds and we're going to proceed to smoke these. Now, how long do you smoke them? It all depends on how you like them. The more you smoke them, the longer you smoke them, they're going to get more dried out and you might, you know, if you're going to use them for, for like a, a recipe where you want to crush them or dice them, you might want to put them on for four or five hours. If you want them a little bit meatier, then you probably want to go maybe an hour or two. So it all depends upon how you like them. So what we're going to do is, we're going to, again, we're going to cut these in half and we're going to clean them out. We're going to get our Smoke and Tex electric smoker going and we're going to put these on. So let's get going. Let's get these set to go. We're going to get our Smoke and Tex going and we're going to make us some Hatch chili peppers. Now the nice thing about these is you can freeze these hatch chilies for long periods of time. You can use them in many different dishes. So they're great to have. We're going to get these all done, probably leave some out to use now, and then of course we're going to freeze some for later use. So here we go. Let's get these things cut up and get these on the smoke and tex. show you what they look like on the inside. Like any pepper, they're going to have a bunch of seeds. And of course, we want to get the seeds and the membranes out, clean them all up, and then we're going to put them on the Smoke and Tex electric smoker. And when we put them on, we're going to put it skin side down and we're going to smoke them. So when you cut them in half like that, what, it, what ends up happening is they actually get more smoke in the meaty part of the pepper. So we'll get these cleaned out, get all these cut up and cleaned out. Meet me out of the smoke attack, so we'll get these on the smoker. Okay, there we have it. We have our hatch chili peppers all cleaned out. All the membranes and the seeds have been removed from these six chili peppers, are cut in half, and they are ready to go on the smoke and text electric smoker. So, so let's head out to the smoker and let's get these on there and make us some smoked hatch chili peppers. Okay, so we are out at the smoke and text. We're gonna get this thing fired up and get our hatch chili peppers 
smoking away. So what we want to do is we want to set our cooking temperature to 200 degrees and then we're going to load the firebox with hickory nuts. We're going to use hickory nuts today to smoke these hatch chili peppers. So let me go get the uh, hickory nuts. We'll get them loaded into the firebox and then we'll get our hatch chili peppers on the smoker. Okay, so we have our hickory nuts here. We're going to load the firebox with the hickory nuts and smoke our peppers. So here we go. All right, it's time to get our peppers into the smoking tech. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a rack out here and we're just gonna set them on the rack like so. We want the skin side down when we're smoking these peppers. And again, we're gonna leave them on there for, depends upon how you like it, but I'm gonna probably leave them on here for several hours. And then uh, we'll check on them and see how they're doing along the way and we'll adjust and determine what we really need, how long we need to keep them on there based on how they look. So there we go. We've got our hatch chili peppers on the smoke and tex. We've got it fired up to 200 degrees. We're gonna slide these in there for several hours. We're gonna check them periodically just to kind of see how they're doing. We've loaded the firebox with hickory nuts, so we'll have some hickory flavored smoke. And again, you wanna put them skin side down and uh, the meaty side up, and that way you get a little bit more smoke on these peppers. So we'll come back in a few hours, we'll check on them, see how they're doing, so stay tuned. Okay folks, we are exactly three hours and 30 minutes into our smoke. And here we have the hatch chili peppers. Yeah, they're looking real good. See, there's a little bit of meatiness to them yet. Just a little bit. They're not completely dried out. And that's how we want them. So I'm going to go ahead and remove them at this point. We're going to take them on inside. And then we will uh, get started on prepping them to put into the freezer for future use. So let's get these on in. And we will meet you back inside and go to work on our hatch chili peppers. Look at those, fantastic. So now that we've uh, had an opportunity to let our uh, hatch chili peppers cool a bit after taking them off the smoker, we let them sit for about an hour and let them get cooled off. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our hatch chili peppers, uh, we're going to take one pepper, which is actually two pieces, and put it in our uh, vacuum seal bags, and we're going to put these right in the freezer. And when it comes time to make enchiladas, or if you want to put some on a hamburger, whatever, you can pull out a single package, which will have a single pepper in it, and you'll be ready to go. So let's get these vacuum sealed up. We'll put them in the freezer, and when the time comes, we will be ready to go with our hatch chili peppers. All right, we'll take them over to the vacuum sealer over here and we'll get these sealed up. All right, we'll get it in the vacuum sealer here and we'll get this vacuum sealed up. All righty, friends, there you have it. It's that simple. We've got uh, six hatch chili peppers all uh, smoked in the smoking text. We've got them uh, vacuum sealed and ready for the freezer. All I want to do now is label them and toss them in the freezer and next time we make a dish that requires some chilies we will pull out these a package of these hatch chili peppers and they will be ready to go with a great smoke flavor. Give this a try. Doing a little scouting this afternoon on actually on my little place. Uh, it's middle part of September and I'm gonna put out some curiosity lure that's put out of course by Texas Raised Hunting Products. Got a spot over here that I want to set it up and we'll try to get see what happens over the next several days. I'll try to check it tomorrow and 
and then maybe won't be able to check it for a week or two because things I have to do with the Dallas Safari Club and the Dallas Safari Club Foundation. So I'm going to walk out here just a little way and put this curiosity lure out and we'll see what happens. I'm going to wait about a week and then I'm going to come up and set up a trail camera bat as well too. Actually what we're doing is, is I've got a spot picked out here. Oh, pretty much just kind of behind me here to the right kind of behind me that I'm going to set up a tent a little bit later on and, and I want to get these deer coming this year to start with and I'll set the tent up then I'll probably put some food around him for a while and uh, get him used to, to the tent really well to where maybe if somebody even wanted to stay and hunt out of the tent they could do so. Let's walk over here and, and uh, put out this curiosity lure and, and uh, like I said, we'll come back and set up a trail camera in about a week or two and, and uh, see what we can find. As you can see, this is right on the edge of, a, of an opening. My property is primarily open, but there is a little bit of, of uh, brush available. Uh, my dad used to use this kind of a trash pile at one time or another, and so we're gonna come in here and clean things out. And as you can see, there's a fair amount of, of uh, different types of brush here, like this yopon. This area has been really been used by deer for a long time and right behind us over here you can see there's a little creek and uh, unfortunately it is a dry creek normally but it is fortunately wet right now and to be very frank with you a little bit later on if we keep the water here we'll have a fair amount of, of wood ducks that come in here which absolutely thrills me so we're gonna let's see we're gonna walk back over here and, and put out this curiosity lure and then come back a week later, in, uh, or a few days later, and, and see what we've got. As you can see, we've got the uh, Curiosity Lure right here from, uh, uh, it's called Curiosity Lure Special Blend that uh, Texas Race Hunting Products puts out. And it's one of those products that seems to work no matter where you're gonna put it. So basically what I'm gonna do is take the lid off to begin with. And as you can see, there's a totally enclosed lid. I'm gonna take the lid off. Actually I'm going to probably put it at the base because it does have some odors. Put it at the base of this bush right here and replace this, the cap, right here. And then I can leave it ever far open I want to. If you'll notice you can close it all the way, you can open it all the way. So basically what we're going to do is, is put this about three quarters open I think, like so and put it in, I'll show you here in just a little bit. When we were cleaning up this area right through here, guess what we found? We found a tree that was hollow. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just place this right in the center there. As you can see, it's really covered. It means if a raccoon comes in, he's gonna have to come all the way down into it. It's gonna make it a little bit difficult for anything like a deer maybe to uh, to reach in there and grab it because a lot of times that's what those deer will do. As you can see down here at the base is a is a uh, the lid that I'm gonna leave there and I'll see whether a coon or something gets it. But let's put this out. We'll come back in here and say, in a, oh, I'll check it probably tomorrow, but also come back in in about a week and uh, then put up a trail camera right here to see what comes in and maybe a little bit later as we get in closer to the rut. Right now these bucks are still in bachelor herds and for the most part they're not on the property we're about a mile away from a nice little creek we got a little, little creek here but we got a free-flowing creek about a mile from here and a lot of times those bucks until about the first part of october middle of october we very seldom see them here and then once this rut gets started because we do have a lot of does in the area next thing you know we'll have a whole lot of bucks here as well too so we're going to come back here tomorrow and check it and see what happens before leaving, I wanted to check a few little places, a couple little trails. And as you can see, we have some deer tracks right here. Not many deer here right now, but there are a lot of does by comparison. As you can see, you can tell this isn't too old because if you look right there, you can tell that there's a, a, a worm pile. And if you look very closely, there's a, a doe track there with a small fawn falling at our heels so tells you that <laughs> we've got at least one fawn this year i'm going to set up a, a uh, another lure that we have here it's called hunter's creed and hunter's creed buck lure we've used this in the past at a lot of different places but i'm just going to kind of set it off on the side of the trail right here and uh, open it up 
and see what happens. We've had really good luck with this. It says buck DNA, as you can see. Let's set it right here and see if we can get something to come up to us. Again, I'm gonna pull the lid off of it, as you can see right there. And if you look, you can tell there's a, I'll pull it back here maybe. There you can see, has kind of a musty sweet odor. Gonna set it up right here. We'll see whether we have a, uh, what comes in here. There's places right here where the tracks are, where we can see the tracks. And uh, I'm gonna place this down below it. I'll pick it up later. You can see it's right here and uh, we'll see what comes into it. Again, we'll set up another trail camera here, but for just give it a few days to begin with. Right now is a good time to be doing all this because we're just about, oh, when it comes to bow season, we're about, about three or four, about two weeks away, I guess, actually. And uh, between uh, my son-in-laws and I and my daughters, we all have a chance to hunt out here. And usually what we do is I usually set up a deer stand right here. You can tell there's water right there. There's water back there. Looks like the hogs been in this one and we do have a fair amount of hogs. And usually this area right in through here is a good kind of a place to set up. We'll set the tripod or not, well, we'll try probably hunt out of a ground blind this year. Set a ground blind back here to the right and uh, where you can overlook this creek bottom because a lot of times these bucks and does, particularly when you get a hard north wind, which I'm hoping we'll have for too very long, they'll kind of come back in here and, and uh, who knows what will show up. The interesting is too, about a year ago, I found a very fresh mountain lion track. Now I've been de dealing with lions for a long time as a wildlife biologist in a lot of different parts of the country. And that looked like that lion was after a, a, a wild hog. Looking at the size of the track, it was probably a female, probably about a two year old female, maybe a little bit older, but uh, she was hanging out in through here for a while and every once in a great long while, even in this populated area, somebody will see a mountain lion or we'll get a trail camera picture and, so you can't ever tell. You just got to be prepared for whatever shows up. We'll come back in here in about oh, in three or four days and, and uh, check this area out again too. Y'all join us again next week right here on The Sportsman's Life. And a special thanks to these fine sponsors. Air Force Air Guns, b, &B Charcoal, Dallas Safari Club, Hornaday, Pyramid Air, Taurus Firearms, Sightmark, Smokin' Tex, Snaplock Hunting Blinds, TRHP Outdoors, and Striper Express.